Lithium-ion batteries are the most power-dense electrical storage solution out there. They're used for pretty much all e-bikes as well as full-size electric vehicles. And this is for a good reason. Let me demonstrate. This is a battery from an e-bike. Easy money. And this is a lead-acid car battery. Wow, that's heavy. Because lithium-ion batteries weigh almost four times less than lead-acid batteries and last three to four times longer, no wonder everyone is heading in that direction. But with great power density comes a major drawback. If these batteries are not treated properly, they have the potential to burn down whatever is around it. So today we're gonna find out what can be done to prevent them from exploding and I'm also gonna demonstrate it later on what it takes to trigger one of these cells. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. I will leave a link for all the parts in the description and let's get started. For today's video, we're gonna focus on 18650 batteries, which are the most popular lithium ion battery out there. Now to simplify why lithium ion batteries catch fire in the first place, we have to understand that these batteries are very sensitive to overheating. This can happen if you pull more current than it is rated for, charge it way too fast, physically damage it, or obviously overheat it. Now the most common reason for lithium ion fires to occur is overcharging them. You might think that having the right charger is enough, right? Well not exactly. While having a charger that outputs just enough voltage to charge a battery to 100%, there still exists one major issue. I'll take three identical lithium ion batteries and spot weld them together in series. Doing this will stack up the nominal voltage from a mere 3.6 volts to more commonly used 12 volts. But before doing that, I leveled out the cells to 3.5 volts, which is basically 50% charge, and then set my power supply to 12.6 volts and 1 amp of current to let it charge up. Once the battery pack is fully charged, we can go ahead and measure the cell's voltage. The first cell seems to be at 4 volts, while the rest are at 4.25 volts. Now even though we can argue that this voltage is still safe, over time the cell voltage will shift higher and higher until it will eventually start heating up and go into thermal runaway, which is a state where the battery starts producing its own heat, oxygen and fuel. And it's why the fire department has such a hard time distinguishing fires from electric vehicles. The easy fix to prevent this from happening is to install a cheap circuit called a battery management system or BMS for short. A BMS is designed to regulate the voltage from each cell by discharging it to a resistor before a cell reaches a dangerous voltage level. To demonstrate this I'll connect a 3 cell BMS to our little battery pack and I'll also hook up a resistor and LED in parallel to see the balancing happen more visually. Now I'll just hook up my adjustable power supply and wait for the LEDs to turn on. Oh look, one of them just turned on. This cell is not going above 4.2 volts and should stay like that until all the batteries are fully charged. All three cells are reading about the same voltage which will ultimately prevent the battery pack from catching fire. Next up on the potential fire list is the risk of over discharge current. A lot of people make this mistake without even realizing which is basically using an undersized battery pack when building a very power hungry vehicle. This right here is a 5000 watt e-bike which I built in a previous video. Now this e-bike has 22 pounds worth of batteries. The reason being is that this little monster pulls up to 80 amps at full throttle. So having more batteries to distribute the load is very important. For example, if we hook up a little battery pack to an electronic load and set it up to suck out a constant 20 amps, we can not only see the voltage drop like crazy, but most importantly, all the cells are starting to heat up. It becomes so hot in fact that I have to stop the test for now before it sets my house on fire. But don't worry, if you stick around to the end, I'll continue this test outside. In order to prevent overcurrent from happening, I would highly recommend checking out the battery pack's datasheet. After doing that, it is still important to get yourself a proper BMS that has overcurrent protection at about 25% of the maximum current. Doing so will prevent the battery pack from allowing too much current to flow to the motor controller for example, which can happen if it gets wet from the inside. 
Next up, we have fast charging, which means feeding more current into the lithium ion batteries than it is rated for, but at the cost of producing more heat. Wait a minute, don't modern EVs like Tesla support super fast charging, where it charges from 10 to 80% in less than half an hour? Well, the trick that they're using is a liquid cooling system. It's kind of like overclocking a PC, which requires a lot of extra cooling to prevent it from overheating, but shortens its lifespan significantly for both cases. The lesson here is if you don't add external cooling, don't charge the batteries with more current than the datasheet says, which for most 18650 batteries is 0.5C or half the amount of its capacity equal to about 1 amp of charging current. Adding another battery in parallel will allow you to charge it at double the amount of current but will ultimately still charge at the same speed. Most e-bike companies seem to play it safe and provide a slower charger in general. The second and final safety concern with lithium ion batteries is overheating. This is something that can easily be prevented by once again getting the proper BMS. Although this time you have to make sure that it comes equipped with one or more temperature sensors, which will stop the battery from either charging or discharging once the battery reaches a certain temperature. By cutting off the current, the batteries will stop heating up, thus preventing them from catching fire. The number one reason why electric cars ignite is physical damage to its batteries. But we're going to test that momentarily outside since there's a very high chance of it doing a lot of damage indoors. I'll grab a couple of batteries and let's go outside to have some fun. The first test we're gonna do is overcharging. I'll hook up 5 volts instead of the recommended 4.2 volts. This will cause the battery to slowly heat up until it reaches a thermal runaway. But before we continue, I have to say that you should not try this at home. Lithium ion batteries can explode quite violently and cause major injury or even death. I'll put on a welding helmet along with some welding gloves and have a fully charged fire extinguisher right next to me. Unfortunately, after the battery reached 5 volts, its temperature didn't go up significantly, so time to raise the voltage a little bit more. I think 12 volts should be enough. After waiting a bit, it started to heat up and I think it would have already blown at this point for not the temperature being this cold. And in pretty much all vehicles, the batteries are packed tightly so there's no way for it to get cooled fast enough like in this case. But to my surprise, there seemed to be some kind of safety mechanism that either chipped due to overheating or having too high of a voltage. But either way, the battery doesn't accept any more charge and doesn't want to discharge as well. So it's safe to say that this battery is permanently damaged, but I do have to mention that that not all lithium ion batteries come with internal protection, so installing a BMS is a must. On to the next one. This test is about overcurrent, but I forgot that this battery can handle up to 30 amps. After the cell was fully discharged, it was very close to exploding, sitting at a temperature of 168 degrees. Moving on to overheating, this setup right here will simulate what happens to a lithium ion battery when a cell right next to it catches fire. I'll direct the flame right under the battery and watch it from the distance. Immediately the pot starts discoloring as its temperature rises. And after waiting for 3 minutes, I'm reading almost 300 degrees and we are about to experience a surprise. I suggest lowering your volume if you're sensitive to loud noises. Wow, that explosion was insane. I'm sure glad I was wearing protection. Let's watch the slow motion. Immediately we can see a cloud of toxic smoke followed by some shrapnel flying in all directions. If we have a look around, there's quite a lot of internals from the battery laying all over the ground. And if we take some steps back, we can find the metal shell from the battery. It's interesting how it exploded. All the internals just shot right out of the top where it seems to be its weak spot. The next test I'll try is creating a short circuit for the battery using a vise. I have to be very fast, so if anything happens to the battery, at least I'm out of the way. Unfortunately, after waiting for a minute, all that happened was the battery heating up, but no explosion. I try this again with another battery, and this time it was a little different. It became very hot and started spilling its electrolyte, but still not enough to do damage for things around it. The final test for today is simulating what would happen when a car goes into an accident and damages its battery. I'll use a nail gun that is usually used for concrete. Here goes nothing. Wow, that was loud. And as we get a little closer, we can see the electrolyte boiling, but that's all. No explosion or fire. 
What a bummer. When I remove it from the vise, we can definitely see some damage, but let's try it out again. This time though, I'll place it upright and maybe something else will happen. Much better. It actually exploded from the bottom, as well as giving off a lot of smoke, as the battery is very hot at this point from getting shorted out through the nail. As we end this video, I do have to say that some off-brand e-bike and battery manufacturers cut corners and either don't get a proper BMS or don't get high current batteries like the one I used earlier, which can easily cause them to catch fire while riding. If you want to know how to test 18650 batteries to see if they are capable of high current or not, then check out this video where I rebuilt the Makita battery. If you like this video, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting this channel through Patreon so I can keep creating better and better videos. And I will see you guys in the next video.